defend us. Thank you that you comfort us. Thank you that you heal us. You provide for us. What a precious daddy you are to us.
means for us to raise our arms and be open to the wind of the Spirit. And this is the way we fight our battles. Thank you, Lord. And, oh, and if your windmill arms get tired, then we've got the Moses thing where his, his friends held up his arms. And, and thank you for crown because you have held up my arms so much. Thank you. It's the one in the Bible, the Bible says, it says, come to me those who are worried and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the one that came into my story. And if you are worried this morning, the God is giving you rest. You shouldn't worry about everything, anything that's happening. God is here to give you rest. That's the one that came into my mind. Any more for any more? No. Right. <laughs> uh, we come to the time of our offering, which is part of our worship. I know many people give monthly, that's fine. But if you would like the details of our account, it's Crown Global, account 378-23988, sort code 090127. Well, there's a QR code on the screen. If you're a visitor, don't feel you're under any obligation. If you'd like to give there's an envelope or in a bucket they can come round to you. So we're just waiting for that. So Jesus we just bless this money. We bless this money for your purposes, for your kingdom, Jesus, that you would use it. May be wisely used to bless others, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, people. And we're now going to go into 60 seconds. You have to be really speedy, and you can hug as many people as you like in your 60 seconds. So we're starting it now. part of your weekend here with us and a big happy father's day to all of our men we appreciate each and every one of you for all you are and all you do to support and strengthen this amazing community so before we welcome pastor steve to minister i'd like to take just a few minutes and tell you about some of the things coming up for you and your family over the next few weeks so check this out on Tuesday this week, we have our worship and prayer night here in the upper room. These times have been full of the power and the presence of God as we worship and we pray for our town. Please join us as Dave and Jill, together with Lindsay, lead us. We're gathering together from 7.30 p.m., so it's one that you don't want to miss. 
Now, if you're new here at Crown, then we want you to feel right at home. And so no matter your background or your current situation, just know that this is a safe place and we're so glad to have you here. We also want you to know that there's a place here at church that's perfect for you. Church is so much more than just a Sunday service. And so if you're ready to get started, the best way to do that is to get connected. Stay around at the end of the service and speak to one of our pastors. We have a free gift that we'd love to give you and we'd love to get to know you just a little bit better. Later this week, one of our pastors will connect with you, and that's it. Once again, thank you for being here at church this week. Calling all of our ladies. This Saturday, the 24th of June, is movie night at Leela's home. We're going to be meeting together at 7 p.m. for food, fellowship, and having a great time with one another. I encourage you to speak to Lindsay or Leela at the end of the service for more details. Now, let's hear from all of our men. In just two Saturdays' time, we are going on our boating day out on the river with Pastor Steve. Now, all the boating places are taken, but we are going to be meeting at the pub for lunch, and we will still have space if you'd like to join us. Speak with Daryl to get booked in, and remember that we have a huge program of summer events for both the men and women. So stay up to date with all the social events on the website at www.crownfamily.church. We believe that the best way to grow in your walk with God is to surround yourself with real and meaningful relationships. And that's why we value community so much around here. And so whether today's your first time or Crown has been your home for years, the easiest way to grow in your relationship with God is inside of what we call small groups. And so on Monday, the 26th of June, we're starting our brand new group called Exploring the Foundations. Pastor Tony and Marilyn, together with Sheena, will be leading this nine week course as we go deeper into God's word. It is free to join, but you do need to register for the course with Lindsay in the church office. And so we would encourage you to get plugged in and let's go deeper in our Christian walk together. One of the beautiful things about being part of a church family is that you don't have to do life alone. Whether you're brand new to church or you've been following God for a long time, you weren't meant to carry burdens by yourself. That God loves you and he wants to hear about what's happening in your life. And so if you need prayer for anything today, we have a team of people that are here just for you. They would love to agree with you in prayer after today's service. And so I want to encourage you, stick around. After the service today, speak to one of the prayer team who would love to stand in agreement with you. And again, we'd love to spend some time praying with you today. The kids are getting together for a special fun fair on Saturday the 29th of July at White Leaf Recreation Ground. This fun event is being planned by the church and runs from 2 p.m. until 4 p.m. And we'd like all of the kids and all of the parents to get involved. Register your child today with the kids team or speak to Dorcas for more details. Well, thank you so much for joining us this weekend at Crown Family Church. We're so thrilled to have you here. Pastor Steve is going to be preaching today, and so you picked a great weekend to be in church. Happy Father's Day again to all you men. And with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to Jill to take our service forward. Have a great day at Crown. Ooh. Um, just to say, Tuesday, we've got, that right, this Tuesday, we've got prayer here. Yes. So that's, I don't think that was mentioned, was it? Was it? Oh, yes. 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 I'll just take that one. Yes. Right, so we'd love you to see you. It's for everybody, okay? At the end of this month, we will not be having these individuals, but it's going to be in-house because Elijah and Lydia. Lydia are going to be doing it. So look out for that. That's going to be great. Right, we've now got Steve who's going to come and preach with us. So Steve, let's just pray for you. So Jesus, we just pray that you would bless, bless Steve and the word that's in his heart for us, Jesus. And just give us open hearts and minds to receive. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready for what the word of the Lord is for you today? Amen. So great to be back in church with you and following a wonderful weekend of ministry in Italy. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I've been traveling throughout Naples and I've been uh, ministering to a group of 50 church leaders. Can you imagine uh, a group of people who are way more senior than I am, have more qualifications than I have, and have a deeper theological understanding of the scriptures than probably I will ever do? Some Catholics, some Protestants, some raving learning charismatics like us, <laughs> but all of them wanting to go a little bit deeper into the things of God to explore what it means to flow in the Holy Spirit. That was a bit like what it was and so I was told from the start please do not preach the baptism of the Holy Spirit because if you do that you'll lose everyone 
So I thought, okay, well, that's okay, we can do it another way. So I came at it another way from sharing them about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and what it means to partner with God to bring transformation to the world. And that is what Jesus does through the power of the person of the Holy Spirit. He brings us into relationship with the Father, and then we have communion with God, and then we can bring about change and transformation. Everyone say transformation. If you hear me preach much, you know it's a cool thing. And that's part of what our DNA is here in Crown. We're about bringing transformation to the world around us. Amen. And so for those of you who don't mean those of you who are perhaps new to church, I'm Steve. I'm the senior pastor here. And it's my great joy and privilege to be ministering here. I think it's been a while. Two, two, three months almost since I was speaking. We're going to get into a better cadence and flow of doing that where um, I'll be ministering at least once a month so that we have a, a good flow of being able to sow in vision of where we're going as a church and what we're looking to do. And, um, you know, this morning is Father's Day, isn't it? Happy Father's Day to all the men. And I don't know about you, but for some of us, Father's Day conjures up wonderful emotions, particularly if you've got kids. And like me, we always celebrate Father's Day the day before. And so I had presents. I thought them are mates and hampers, no less. <laughs> Coffee, biscuits, chocolates, um, a bottle of something very nice, which I won't tell you too much about. But there we are. And so that was on, on position on the and fireplace. And that's love. lovely. But for many of us, we who perhaps didn't know our fathers or didn't have the relationship that we wanted with our earthly fathers, or perhaps even you don't uh, no longer have your earthly father with you and they're, they're no longer around, Father's Day can be a time of pain. It can be a time of thinking, oh my gosh, I wish that I could have, would have, should have said this or done that or had some better relationship, better connection to my earthly dad. And whatever um, person you are, whatever group of people you're in this morning, in your thinking about fatherhood, I want you to know something, that there is a heavenly daddy, Abba Father, who loves you unconditionally. He has made you to be his son and daughter. He's given you a name. He's given you a purpose. He's given you a voice. He's given you the ability to share his love with the world around us. And God has made you to be the image of Jesus. The Colossians, but it says he, he was the image of the invisible God. That is Jesus. And the same way that Jesus was the image of the invisible God, you and I are created to reflect his glory to the world around us. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? So I want to begin. We're going to look from Ephesians. I've been studying the book of Ephesians this week just in my own personal meditation. And I want to read to you from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. And I'm reading in the, the Passion Translation just to bring it into a little bit of new context. Let's listen to this. Ephesians 1, 3. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us. It is a love gift from our wonderful heavenly father. Isn't that wonderful? The father of our Lord Jesus, all because he sees us wrapped up into Christ. This is why we celebrate him with all of our hearts. Isn't that wonderful? Every spiritual blessing has been given to you and to me. It has been given to us because we have been united with Christ, wrapped up into him, and so no longer you live but Christ lives in you. Isn't that wonderful? And I don't know if you were with us a few weekends ago, we haven't had the baptisms. We celebrated a funeral service and a resurrection service all in one. And my cousin Elijah, who's just coming back from the Caribbean next week, so you'll see him again. He got saved last month and his whole family were there to witness um, him being dunked in the water. And he said goodbye to an old way of life, to an old habit, to old behaviors, to old soul tie connections that had held him captive. And as he went into those waters of baptism, he said, I'm no longer allowing that to have a hold on me anymore. I relinquish myself of that sinful nature and I am now dead to it in Christ. It is buried in the tomb and the waters of baptism. And as he came out of the waters, he is then a new creation in Christ Jesus. I remember one story of a time when I baptised a guy. It was actually done in Tintagel in Cornwall. And the guy had been so bound with demons that he had been addicted to heroin for many, many years. 
and uh, he had this uh, uh, readings and clairvoyancy that he had been to see in the past and he went down into these waters of baptism and man these demons came screaming out he got wonderfully delivered and he began a new life in Christ he was fundamentally changed from the inside out by the goodness of God and I remember a few years later seeing him and um, there, there was a particular person who visited the service who was one of these warlocks in the area and down in the southwest you get a lot of those crazy types and this guy kept trying to heckle curses on this guy and sort of shout at him and all this stuff and he said may i remind you that i died and he this guy who was the warlock he said yes that's right it was the 15th of may 2000, 1994 whatever it was you know i couldn't believe it listening to this dialogue between this guy he knew that the demon knew that it had no hold on this guy because the moment he went through the waters of baptism his old life was dead hallelujah that's what we are now in christ we are redeemed hallelujah and so being in christ is about knowing the father's love it's about being connected to the source it's about dwelling in him and him in us. Hallelujah. And that goes far beyond simple knowledge, head knowledge about Jesus, but it affects every part of our lives. We experience the reality of God's fatherly love in Christ, and we can share it to the people around us. Isn't that great? And that way, we become contagious. We become attractive to people, and we become a people of power. Everyone say power. power. Power, because we do not tolerate certain things to come into our border anymore. You see, as a believer, your job, your role, is to exercise the work of the kingdom in the earth. Everyone say the kingdom in the earth. That's when Jesus prayed. He said, told his disciples to pray, he said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you know, as we go about our lives, we are our ambassadors for Christ and our job is to bring transformation to society yes. Yes. So the question is how do we go about doing that well we have to have the power of the Holy Spirit in order to do that we've got to actually believe that God is in us that Christ Jesus through the power of his Holy Spirit is at work in us yes. and therefore when I speak miracles happen where I lay hands on the sick miracles happen that means we've got to be a supernatural people doesn't it and I don't know about you friends but that kind of challenges me it kind of provokes me because if that's who I'm meant to be, then the question is when I'm not living like that every single day, then what's going on? And suddenly we breathe a big gasp and go, gosh, the life of a believer is meant to be a life of power. Amen. Okay, so hang on, hang on a minute. I'm not like you, Steve. I'm not an extrovert. I'm quiet. I'm an introvert. I don't like shouting. I don't like speaking like you do. That doesn't mean, friends, that the Holy Spirit living in you is any less powerful. You can be quiet in the way that you speak. You can be gentle in your actions. But the same Holy Ghost that's in me is in you. The same Holy Ghost that brings transformation to the world is in you too. Hallelujah. It's the power of God. Unto what? Unto salvation to salvation and so friends i want us to um, come back again to why we're doing this series at the moment we called it the power of the cross and daryl did so well last week eloquently presenting it again to us why the cross of jesus is so important why friends because it's the father's love in work yeah. it's the father's love in action Jesus' action of going to the cross was a reflection of the perfect love of the Father in that he gave up his life for you and he said, it is finished. It is finished. It's done. No longer will you have to go through rituals in order to get to God. No longer will you have to go through that cleansing process every time of offering sacrifices, going to the high priest, going to these different people as intermediaries. Now, because of Jesus, we have access into the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. And so we meet with our Lord and we meet with our King and we now reflect His glory. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 verses 4 to 7 says this, But God, who is rich in mercy, because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, He made us alive together with Christ, for by grace you have been saved and raised up together with him and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse 7, that in the age to come, he might show us the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness 
towards us through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God has made you to be rich in mercy. He loves you. He has made you alive. He has given you authority. He wants to show you his grace and his kindness. Isn't that wonderful? He is a good, good father. And you know, if you have had a bad experience with your earthly father, I just want you to know that you're, that God is nothing like your earthly father. You might have had the most wonderful, perfect father, someone who was so tender and kind and loving and, and you had a great relationship, but God's even more, more wonderful than that. <laughs> even more wonderful than that. He just loves you. He knows you intimately. He knows every hair on your head. Romans 8, 15 says this, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage to fear, Amen. but you received the spirit of adoption by which we cry out, Abba, Abba Father. Father. What is that word, Abba Father? It's actually a Amaramaic word, and it means daddy. Daddy Father. You know, um, Nathan is going through a stage at the moment where at school, everyone is now calling their parents mum and dad. And uh, I've, I kind of, I don't like it because I, I'm daddy. And, you know, and Maria is mummy. And so, you know, your parents go through this thing as their kids get a little bit older. Dad, I said, who's dad? You mean daddy? That's me. Because it's something that conveys to me a, a deep sense of affection, of intimacy, of love. Dad. Daddy. Abba. The one that I love. The one that I follow. My leader. My helper. You know, when, when Nathan comes to me sometimes, he speaks with such conviction and confidence. You know, he's, he's a little leader in the making. And he'd come up to me, and there was a time where he was with one of his friends, and they were wanting to have an ice cream. And he came into the room, and he announced to the room, my daddy will give us an ice cream. <laughs> you know, and I looked at him, and I went, oh, really? How do you know that? And he, he looked, and he said, well, I know that you will. I said, really? Do I have ice cream? Does it look like I've got ice cream? But Danny, I know. I said, how do you know? Because you're my daddy. Because I am his daddy. Abba, Father. You know, your Father in heaven wants to give you the gifts of the Spirit. He wants to give you his affection. He wants to give you his love and his peace. He wants to lavish it upon you. Isn't that wonderful? So no dad. Bad, bad, bad. Just daddy <laughs> you know, in the Bible we learn that God is love. He is a compassionate father. He so loved the world that he gave us Jesus. Amen? Amen. To take the ultimate punishment on the cross, to pay the price for man mankind's sin. Let's look at Ephesians 2, 11 to 13, just continuing through the book of Ephesians. Therefore, remember that you, you were once Gentiles in the flesh. What does that mean, in the flesh? It means in your own selfish nature, in the way that we were created in the flesh, who are called the uncircumcision by what is called circumcision, made in the flesh by hands, that at the same time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. This is verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off, have been brought near to him by his blood. Hallelujah. There is a transition that has occurred in us. We've been moved from death to life. We've been moved from hopelessness to hope. We've been moved from death into a new life of living for destiny. You know, eternal life doesn't begin when you die. It begins the moment you get saved. Hallelujah. Eternal life is a life full of purpose. The Greek word for it is zoe life. It means super abundance. Super abundant life. That means we don't have to tolerate certain things that happen in our world. We go, no, I don't want that anymore because I am living in so in life. That doesn't mean we're gonna, not going to face things. We go through ups and downs all the time. But our position in the way that we think about things, the way we communicate about things, the way we commune with the Father of God is through a position of victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Through a position of victory. But friends, when we talk about fatherhood in our generation, there is an issue. It's one of the biggest issues in the world today, isn't it? So many people grow up without knowing who their dad was, or even if they knew who they were, they don't want to have a relationship or fellowship with them. The famous Star Wars quote from Darth Vader to Luke Skywalker, 
I am your father. <laughs> it became one of the most well-known clips in the 20th century <laughs> film and media. The subject matter has been in so many soap operas and popular comedies around fathers and their failings. Mm. And I remember when I was studying uh, what it means to be a father, I went through YouTube looking at all of these countless videos and I found on YouTube this video of this 72 year old man and he was a grandfather and he was being interviewed about his life and his family he was a survivor of the war a survivor through Auschwitz as well at the time and he may well have well have died now this is quite an old film um, but he expressed that his greatest achievement in life was his children and his grandchildren and then the interviewer asked the 70 year old man 72 year old man do you have any regrets in your life and with that question, the man begins to well up, and with tears in his eyes, he began to sob. And he said, my biggest regret, regret was not being able to make my father proud of me. You see, the issue of pleasing our earthly fathers, it transcends generations. I think if we're all honest, we all wanted to hear our fathers tell us how proud they were of us. Something that is very deep within us, a sense of wanting to know who we are and have that affirmation. And as I looked on Google, you know, I'm in marketing and so Google is my friend. Mm -hmm. I went on Google and I looked on Google UK for the number of searches. And there are over 2,543 articles listed under the subject, how to make your dad proud of you. Mm -hmm. wow. How to make your dad proud of you. If you're a dad here today, can I just encourage you, please tell your son and your daughter how much you love them how proud you are of them and if you haven't heard that or didn't hear that from your earthly dad can i uh, would you allow me to give you a father's blessing today and say as your pastor i love you i'm proud of you i i am thankful to god for each and every one of you and you know god has called us to release the blessing of god upon each other and as I look out on you guys here today, I see sons and daughters of God. I see people of destiny. I see people of purpose. And I'm proud to be your brother in Christ. I'm proud to stand in partnership and to serve you here in this church. And I believe with all of my heart that God has a vision for us to impact this region. And that God is going to do it through us together. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, gosh. Thank you, Jesus. Give me strength. Well... <laughs> shall we get let's go personal shall we for a moment I remember when uh, uh, in the, the the last couple of years of my dad's life you know he um, he got cancer and so went through a time of uh, um, going through treatment for that and, and then uh, decided that he was going to just grin and bear it and he actually decided in his last year of his life that he was going to travel the nations like never before. I said to him, are you crazy, man? You should, this is the time where you should be chilling out, relaxing, and spending time with mum. And uh, uh, I think mum felt the same, to be honest. But dad said, no, I'm going to go out with a bang. And I thought, wow, that's, okay, that's something. So we're going to pray that God will extend your life to enable you to do all the things that you feel he has for you. And I remember him saying to me, Steve, they've given me three months to live, but I'm asking God for another year so that I can just go about doing these final things that I know I have to do. And in some of the last days of his ministry, he would sit on the stage because he was too unwell to stand. And he would prophesy from a seated position on the platform as the word of God would flow through him. He would see countless people healed in those services, yet in his natural body would be wrapped with terminal cancer that had metastasized into different parts of his body. And I remember I said to him, Dad, is there anything that we can do to help you? And he said to me, son, let's have faith and let's pray. You know, if this is my time, I'm going to go out in faith. If it's, if I'm going to go out, if, if, if this is my time, I'm going to believe God that he gives me every day on this earth with purpose and so we just got into faith and we prayed we surrounded him with prayer and then about three weeks four weeks before he went to be with the lord and he was sat in his chair in his house at home and he looked me in the eye and he said son it's time for me to go to the hospice and i said okay are you sure he said yeah let's go and so off we went and he got himself settled in and very very quickly um, he then started to get the pain relief and very quickly he, uh, he deteriorated from that point. But when we were at the hospice, I made a, an agreement with him that every day I would go in and 
read the work to him, to encourage him and to inspire him. And I've had the great privilege of doing that with many others over the years and with, with Anna and her family as well, different ones of going and just ministering to people who have been in their beds at home, just praying for them in the hospital. And, and I go every day and I just encourage him in the word of God and we pray together. And he turned to me after one of those times, just he and I in the room, he said, son, my greatest desire is that you now climb on my shoulders, that you don't repeat the errors that I made in my life, that you take on what God has done through us and you take it to the next level. He said, son, I want you to know that you are blessed. I want you to know that my love for you has no, uh, you don't have to earn it. You don't have to do anything for it. I want you to know that I'm for you. And I know my earthly days are numbered, but take on what God has done and run the race, fulfill your call and be blessed in doing it. And he said, get down on your knees. You know, when he give, used to give you an instruction, you'd be like, yes, boss. Get down on your knees. And it was, he gave me two, two father's blessings in my life. One was the day I got married with Maria. And the second was the week before he we went to be with the Lord, where he reached down with his hand from his hospice bed and placed his hand on my head. And he blessed me. And the favour of God came upon me from that point forward. I do believe it was a moment of significance in God where we receive a blessing from our dads that releases us. And today I have a, a, a calling from the Holy Spirit, which he spoke to me to do this week, that if there is anyone here who has not received a blessing from their earthly father. I know that as a, uh, as, as a minister of God this morning, God has given me the authority to release a father's blessing over your life, to bring you into fruitfulness. And we're going to do that at the end of this service. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus tells us how the father feels about us. In Matthew seven eleven. it says this, If you then, though you're evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Jesus gives us this example so we can all relate to it. Then he ramps it up with how Father God feels about us. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? You see, God's not looking for superstars. He's not looking for celebrities to eat with. He's looking for ordinary folks just like me and just like you. All the requirement is, is that we come to him clean, available and say, Lord, here I am, use me. We're made for relationship, folks. We're made for communion with our Heavenly Father. And He wants to have intimacy with us. He wants to spend time with us. When was the last time you took time aside to have relationship with your Heavenly Father? When was the last time you take a, took a moment not to proactively read the Scriptures and do something to try and earn favour, but just to sit and wait and say, God, would you speak to me? I want to hear your fatherly voice ministering to me. You know, as we take time to do that, even this week, God will come in his presence with his peace and he will speak to us. Amen. You know, the Eiffel Tower is one of the most well-known structures in the world. It's 323 meters tall. It's named after the man who built it, designed it, Gustav Eiffel. The tower is made of iron and it weighs about 10,000 tons and comprises of over 32,000 iron rivets. Interesting fact, eh? But did you know you can also visit the Eiffel Tower in many other locations in the world as well? In fact, if you go to Las Vegas today, you can see a beautiful replica of the Eiffel Tower. You know, it looks similar. In fact, it looks identical. It's the same size, the same shape. It has all the right features, all of the right details. But if you begin to inspect the tower in Las Vegas, you'll see that it's very different. Because, in fact, it's not made of iron. It has no rivets in it whatsoever. It's made of plastic and carbon fibre. In actual fact, it's an utter fake. And in the days of fake news, particularly with Donald Trump and the States, America has done it again and produced a glorious fake of the Eiffel Tower. You know, the Eiffel Tower, it's in Las Vegas. It's so far from the genuine article that it's utterly fake. And there's no good looking at replicas of an original to form your opinion about it. We need to see the original thing. 
And so, my friends, why I'm telling you this story is if you've had a bad experience with your own dad, then get, your back, get yourself back to the source and begin not to look at replicas, but look at the king. Look at your heavenly father, yeah. Father God in heaven, because he's the genuine article. Yeah. There's no fake news around him. He's the genuine article. He's full of unfailing love for you. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you know, God wants us to experience his love. Ephesians 3, let's read it, verses 14 to 15. Ephesians 3, 14 to 15. For this reason, I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God isn't that wonderful <clears throat> you know that Greek word that's used there the word to know in the Greek original language of the New Testament it's the word gnosko and that word speaks of way more than just head knowledge way more of just the knowledge that we know but it's an experienced knowledge it's something that we actually get to experience and feel. The word speaks of an understanding, but not just knowledge, but something that's lived out in our lives. So we experience God's love. We experience his love. These are some of the characteristics which God has revealed through the scriptures. And with these, I'm going to close and then I'm going to bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Write these down if you want. God is compassion. Say that with me. God is compassion. I'll just read you out some scriptures if you're making notes and you want to revisit it on the on the uh, YouTube or on the website. Exodus 34 verse 6. Second one, God is our counsellor. Psalm 73 verse 24. You will guide me with your counsel and afterwards you will take me to your glory. God is our protector. Psalm 91 and John 10 27 to 29. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them life eternal. Hallelujah. God is full of wisdom. Say that, full of wisdom. Isaiah 11 verse 2. God will give you rest. Say that with me. God will give me rest. Matthew 11, 28 and 29. Come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Next one. God is patient. Say that with me. 2 Peter 3 verses 9 and 15 The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises As some understand slowness Instead he is patient with us Next one God is love God is love Of course John 3 16 God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son Whosoever believes in him will not perish But have eternal life God is the gardener Hello? Did he say that right? Say it with me. God is the gardener. What does that mean? Well, he's the gardener. His job is to prune us. You know, pruning is something that takes place in the spring, the summer, and the autumn. Sometimes some plants are even pruned in the winter. What is pruning? It's when you take the cutting, you cut off anything that was dead. In actual fact, there are some bits that were living, that were thriving, that have to be pruned in order that the flowers and fruit for the following season will come again. You know, the good things in your life, the things where you've had success, the things where you've had joy, sometimes even those things will go through a pruning. And pruning is painful. Ooh, isn't it? Pruning is painful because God strips things away from us in order that new life might emerge, in order that the newness that he wants for us might emerge. And so some of us today, I know, are going through a pruning season. I know I'm going through a pruning season. And I just say, Lord, I don't want your, I don't want to reject you as my gardener. I want to receive you as my heavenly gardener, so that you can prune my life, that you can strip away from me anything of the old wood, anything of the old nature, even the gifts that you've given me once, if they're no longer fit for purpose, 
then strip them away with me and give me something new in order that I might fulfill your assignment. Did you hear the word of the Lord today from Dave? I thought that was absolutely magic. If there has been a gift that was given to you that was put into the toy box and you've forgotten about it, it's time to pick up the gift again. It's time to take on the torch. And then Anne's word that came again. Wow, wow, wow. God is speaking to us, church. God is speaking to us. Say it one more time. God is my gardener. John 15 verses 1 and 2. Just a few more before we finish. God is righteous. John 17, 25. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. He is our righteousness. God molds and makes us. Isn't that wonderful? That we are to be the clay on the potter's wheel. That he takes us and plop, puts us on the wheel, and then he molds us. He makes us and crafts something truly stunning and beautiful. I said truly stunning and beautiful. If you're looking at your life, you're saying, well, where's the beauty? Friends, I'm looking right at it. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. Isn't that wonderful? God is eternal. God comforts. God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. If you're thinking, well, where is the blessing of God? He's already given it to you. Do you remember that example that we used to use? I used to get the bottle of water out and to I'd have the bottle of water and have it hidden under a serviette or something. And so often we're praying, God, give me the water. God, give me the gift. God, give me the next thing. God, do this for me. Do this. And we treat God as this sort of person in the sky that just dishes out things whenever we ask. Give me, give me, give me. Yes, please. Thank you, Daddy. The prayer should not be, Lord, give me. Because the Bible says he has already given us every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. So the prayer actually, friends, should be, Lord, reveal to me that which is already mine. Reveal to me that which is mine in Christ. Because when I understand who I am and I understand the gifts that have been given, then I can walk in authority, then I can walk in power, then I can be effective in my life as a believer. Hallelujah. God is gracious. Say that with me. God is gracious. God is full of peace. 2 Timothy 1 and 2. I love this one. God is faithful. Faithful God. He will never leave you. He will never disappoint you. He is always with us. This is the one I like the worst. God is my correction. He disciplines us. Now, I don't take any joy in discipline my, disciplining my children, but I know sometimes I have to. Because if I don't, then, you know, it gets out of hand. And so there are times where daddy has to step up and speak and say, no, go sit on the step. Or correct in order to teach and align. You know, in the days gone by, of course, you know, the people used to talk a lot about smacking and hitting of children and the, the whole thing of do, should we do this or should we do that? And these days, you can't really talk about that because if you're smacking children, then that's abuse, right? But there is the correction of God that is absolutely right in him. Correction is never har- out of harshness. Correction is out of love. And so how do we correct? How does God correct us? He doesn't beat us with a stick, friends. You know, and if you're, it's, come on, let me, can we talk to the Africans for a moment? Hello? <laughs> Dorcas, can I talk to you? Yes, Mr. Lord. I, I lived with Lydia in uh, Bujumbura for a time, and I saw the sticks that they beat the children with. You know, if you did something wrong, <laughs> uh, are we talking? Can we talk? Yes. Felicity, can we talk? I don't know whether you had to experience this as well. No? No, not Felicity. Okay, she's okay. Dorcas knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> And that cane came out. Goodness me. Put the fear of God into you. That's not, some of us have that view of how God is with us. That we do something wrong. We're going to get some sort of slap. No. God corrects us in love. He is patient with us. He is kind with us. Despite all of the things that we've done wrong. Despite our countless failures. Again and again and again. He is merciful. Full of love full of peace God is impartial 
He doesn't favour one, one over another. He provides continual care. God is our forgiveness. God is our holiness. And God is true and just in his judgment. Revelation 16 and 7, verse 7. Friends, I don't want to go any more. We could go into the names and characters of God, but maybe we'll do that another day. But I want to release over you today a Father's blessing to bless you, to bring you into favour, to bring you into peace. You know, if you've gone through a phase of your life where you didn't know your dad, or if you've never had that, I just want to take a moment in God's presence now to just experience his love. So I'm just going to ask you to just wait for a moment as we go back into a short time of worship. And I'm going to ask the prayer team to just come and be available to pray with different ones. Uh, because we're just going to experience the presence and peace of God right now. Maria, can you just turn the piano on, please? Jesus. 
Jesus, I release a Father's blessing over you today. I release you from every curse. I release you from every assignment of the enemy. And I bring you now into favor. I bring you now into freedom. I bring you now into the favor and joy and provision of the King of Heaven. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I bless you to know your Father. I bless you to know his peace. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding now fill you with his peace.
you want prayer for anything, come and see one of the prayer team at the end. I'd love to pray for you. Stand with you in agreement. See you set free into all that God has for you. And we wish you a happy Father's Day. Amen. Thank you for all you do in the house of God. Thank you for all you do to serve us. Let's look at someone. Let's say the words of the grace together. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Stay around for tea and coffee.